Imagine being one of the first people to get an iPod, to get such a revolutionary invention the same year it was invented. And not only just that, but imagine Steve Jobs giving it to you as a gift. Well, in 1888, a lucky girl was given a camera from George Eastman. Eastman called this camera the Kodak, and this device would not only go on to change the world, but it would also greatly impact the life of the girl who received it, Frances Benjamin Johnston. Born in 1864 to a journalist as a mother and a father who worked for the U.S. Treasury, Frances Benjamin Johnston grew up in a very prominent family. This afforded her the luxury of having access to the rich and the famous, which helped take her career as a photojournalist to new heights. Today, she is known as one of the first female photographers to rise to prominence. Before she began her career in photojournalism, Johnston received fine arts training at the Académie Julian in Paris, France, and at the Art Students League in Washington, D.C. She began writing and illustrating for prominent newspapers and magazines when she was given a Kodak camera from Mr. Eastman, like the one pictured here. Realizing the photos that developed from the camera would be much better accompaniments to her articles than her illustrations ever could be, Johnston decided to pursue this up-and-coming field called photography. Some of her first works as a photojournalist were covering important events and festivals, such as this one pictured here. This is a photo Johnson took at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago. Some of Johnson's most profound and well-known work documents early education among white African American and Native American schools. In this image, she captures a history class in the middle of a lesson at an all-black school in Tuskegee, Alabama in 1902. But what really brought Johnson to the forefront of the art of photojournalism was the fact that she was given access to the White House and to important people of her time. This image shows a young black boy holding the hand of a little white girl, a fairly controversial image for that time as they hunt for eggs at the annual White House Easter egg hunt. Johnson was able to document much of the lives of the first families through the turn of the century. This is a picture Johnson took of one of Theodore Roosevelt's sons, Quentin, sitting in a tree on the White House grounds in 1902. Johnson was able to bring others with her through her photos on her all-access pass of the White House showing the first families and the monumental home as many had never seen it before. This is a photo of First Lady Frances Cleveland relaxing by a large window in the West Sitting Hall of the White House, which was one of Cleveland's favorite places. The list of public figures that Johnson had the opportunity to document is extensive. From famous African-American educator Booker T. Washington to United States Navy Admiral George Dewey, Johnson made a name for herself in portrait and candid shots of the famous. Pictured here is Admiral Dewey relaxing alongside his dog Bob aboard the Asiatic flagship Olympia in 1899. Johnson was able to join the crew on the Olympia flagship to document their time as they sailed out from China with orders to attack the Spanish at Manila Bay. She captured the sailors aboard the ship, casually eating a meal after having won the battle in this image in 1898. Frances Johnson was a very strong-willed woman who wanted to show that women can do anything they set their minds to. In this self-portrait, she is dressed as a man standing next to a bicycle, and she's wearing a fake mustache. She loved to push the limits, doing the same things men did and in the case of photography, doing it better than most men. By producing highly skilled photos, Johnson leveled the playing field for women in photography and photojournalism. Overall, Frances Benjamin Johnston played a huge role in the history of photojournalism, especially for women. Her works can currently be found in the Library of Congress, which also includes her later work of garden and estate photography. Johnson traveled relentlessly in search for the next image up until her death at the age of 88 in New Orleans. 
author of Photojournalism, The Professional's Approach, Kenneth Cobre, called Johnson an indomitably spirited photographer who managed to transcend the constraints usually imposed on Victorian women and make her mark in the newsroom. Well, that's a nice